Oh, I'm sorry, I can't see you there. Um, I just got back from board game afternoon and was just starting to unpack my games. I guess since you're here, I'll tell you about it. Okay? Um, let's see. I got everything in plastic bags here because uh, it was raining on the way there and back. That's a helpful way to, to carry things. How was it? It was nice. It was it was it was a pretty great time actually. Um, first, we we didn't play this game. We played it's an expansion box. I saved them to play another game. We played Crusoe's Planet, which was uh, interesting to play with a group of people for the first time. First of all, I, I was playing it by myself. I was the first one there, and so I waited a little bit. I looked around the store. I looked at the things several times there. Um, but it's fun to see just kind of what what games look like in person or their boxes look like in person. So that was nice. Uh, but then I started. I set up a game by myself of um, a communist group, tribal communism. I'd done the capitalist uh, tribal capitalism poorly. It turns out I, I, I bopped some rules, which is pretty much de rigueur for me playing alone. Uh, so I set it up by myself. Um, got through like the part way through the first cycle. Started to see an interesting trend with certain players um, tended to take the leisurely route. There's a grasshopper path um, which is more leisurely because everything was just divvied up evenly and so um, yeah it was a it was a six player game. I think number of players does matter for a game like this because you can um, in terms of survival certain spaces can just give you a ton of food. So if you have less people, it's it's maybe easier to survive. I don't know. Um, there's there's so much to explore in this game that uh, I'm really excited about it. It's been, been really fun. Um, so I started playing that, and then people started to show up, and so I got some people to play with me. Um, I gave them the choice between the three tribal... Uh, the, the three tribal... Um, governments or economies, I guess economies, to play, to play with, um, which are tribal capitalism, tribal socialism, and tribal communism. Um, they went with socialism. Two, two chose socialism, one chose capitalism. Interesting breakdown because those two and that one uh, had some fallings out during the game, which is not unusual. Uh, so the socialism game is, is a felt a lot more like a cooperative, a strict cooperative game than um, the capitalism game that I played, or maybe even the communism game. Communism game, there was a sort of, um, and maybe it could have been because I was playing by myself, but there was sort of a competition to see how much you could slack off and still have everyone survive. I don't know. Um, the difference between the two is the communism game, you always split it up evenly, split things up evenly, take turns taking your pick from the pot. Whereas the socialism game, you vote on how you're going to divide it up every time. So there's a, a little bit more of a check on it. And we saw that right off the bat. So um, the one guy wanted to be capitalist. Um, he, so a bit about the group dynamic. He tends to be something of a black sheep in the group. Um, he, uh, he has this trait where he will disbelieve even the simplest rule that you tell him and ask you to prove it which is not always a bad trait. Sometimes it's, it's just he's trying to understand it. Um, sometimes he just doesn't want the rule to be that way because it's not in his favor. Um, and it's always tough if you have both of those traits, right? Because if you don't, if you have trouble understanding things, that's one thing, right? But people are going to have less patience to explain it to you if you do it on purpose other times. So, for example, in this game, it's roll and move, right? But if you have experience with a certain number, and you roll that number, you can add or subtract one very from the number. Very simple, I think, concept. There was an instance where someone rolled a one, and one was their experience number, and he thought they should be able to go forward one and then back one. And, and it's not just that he didn't understand it, it's that when I told him how it was supposed to be, that you just subtract one from the number and you can't go to zero, he just doesn't believe you, and it becomes this long discussion, which I, I don't normally mind. I like an inquisitive mind, but sometimes there's certain, you just have to have some faith in the person who knows, kind of knows the rules in order for the game to flow. So that that's a problem, and that was getting on 
some people's nerves. And they, granted, I think the guy kind of hurts from his reputation. People don't always give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, and so during the first cycle, he landed on a space. And we were kind of, sh we were short on food. We needed some food. Landed on some space with some eggs, I think some water, and then one piece of leisure. And he took the leisure. And everyone was like, what? We need that food. And so then when we got to the end of the track, uh, he suffered from it because, you know, three of us were like, okay, you're going to get the short end of the stick now because you took the leisure. And he ended up uh, getting hurt. Um, then, you know, after that, he, he started playing ball and working together. But the, pers the interpersonal stuff was such that one person just, like, wanted to kill him. And so they did. And it was intense. I mean... It was just an intense thing to kind of be in the middle of. I, I stayed neutral, and I was like, I, you know, I think we can all be fine. We can all uh, whatever. But I didn't try to stop them either, uh, because you know, either way in the game, you know, playing as a self-interested party, uh, my guy was going to survive. And as a group, I don't know. If maybe it wasn't for the best. I, I don't know. Um, to have that that. Uh, that challenging element that was causing all this, you know, people wanted to quit the game as a result of, of the constant interruptions and constant things, you know, and I try to tell them, I was like, look, I, I like you, but what you're doing is really annoying and whatever, I'm not going to get into all the drama, but it wasn't that dramatic, really, it's kind of every day, every, at this particular game store, Every time I go there, this is this sort of thing kind of happens. But this game brought it out in this beautiful way. Um, that was it was exciting to me. It, it had a it, it had this sort of reality to it, which was great. Um, so he ended up dying. They took all his stuff. Um, the rest of us ended up surviving. Uh, I got got a lot of good roles. I was the guy who did the radio signal thing. I thought that was a good position to be in a socialist. Um, in a socialist uh, economic system. Not sure I would have taken that path in the capitalist economic system because you really got to just trust individuals to just kind of give you what you need to survive if you're the one getting the radio signals. For those of you who don't know the game, um, I have a couple of videos up about it. I'll just let you watch those. So that was great. Um, great gaming experience. I'm so excited to play this again. One of the people, I, I asked you know, people what they thought of the games we played afterwards. One of the people uh, said that was their favorite and looked through, wanted to look through the book and was just excited um, to see what sorts of things you could do with the game. You know, seeing slavery, racism, all these things you can explore uh, with this game, Crusoe's Planet. Um, she, she's actually a relatively new gamer. Um, I think most of her experiences is with Power Grid, but she was definitely down to play this again. She was, she was also the one who killed the guy. <laughs> um, so, Crusoe's Planet, lots of fun, got, got some experience with all three of the tribes, the tribal economies now, and that's great. So then after that, um, another guy came up and we played Sneaks and Snitches, first time playing that game. I don't have a copy to show you, um, but it was fun, it was... You know, when he explained the rules, I kind of knew what to expect, and it was that way. Um, it's a, for those of you who don't know, it's a game where you have like eight different places you can go to get particular resources or things that you want, and each person has can block a place or and try to take from a place. And if no one blocks you in the place that you take, and you're, you're all simultaneously picking those two things, if no one blocks you, you get this resource. Okay, and then it's a, a competition. If you have the most of the different colors, you get points or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, re really well-made game. A lot of, like, kind of trying to get into people's heads. Um, yeah, not a lot to say about it. I got, uh, towards the end of the game, I was just kind of playing. It's a game you got to play fast. Don't, one of the people was really trying to overthink it, and we're just kind of like, oh, just, just play it. It's, it's a game designed to be played quickly, I think. Um, towards the end, there was a horse statue that I took a shine to. Um, didn't try to get it for a long time because it's worth a, a, a straight point. You know, it's not, you don't have to have a majority of gems or anything like that. And then it was like, I think the last turn or the second to last turn, I was like, I'm just going to try and take the horse statue. People have been blocking it left and right, but I just tried to take it, and I took it. 
and it it ended up being the point that that won me the game. I didn't think I, I didn't think I was doing that well because I just kept. Um, I, if you pl pick the same space as someone else, you both just get a, a card, which is basically worth like one gem or one of the things. And so, um, but I I got that like every turn, <laughs> like every single turn, I was just picking the same space as someone else. Didn't get blocked much though, so maybe that that was partially it. And the guy who seemed to be dominating, he was just going in one color, so he had a lot of blue and he got the blue points, but he didn't get. You know, I scored on everything else because I had all these colors that no one knew about. Um, so that was that was a nice game. I I'm not really super excited to play it again, but maybe that's just because I'm really excited about Crusoe's Planet right now. Uh, by the time that was done, it was almost time to go. Um, so we played Princess, which I guess I should unpack since I'm talking about it. Princess, I actually have Hamlet in here too. I always bring Hamlet along, hoping someone's going to see it and be like, yeah. Yeah, all right. I would love to play that game. I don't ever sell it, you know. Um, Crusoe's Planet, I was like, hey, you want to play Crusoe's Planet? Look, I have it. Uh, you know, but, um, but Hamlet, I haven't done that with yet. Maybe I will someday. Um, I've, I have played it with people before. Three people doesn't play great with three people, I'd say. You need to have more to really bring out the fun of Hamlet. But um, Hamlet is, I would describe it as a popcorn game. It's a game that, that relies heavily on the kind of the humor of the premise, or that not necessarily the humor, but something interesting about the premise. Oftentimes, popcorn games will be humorous to someone, generally not to me. But this is one that I actually really um, am interested in. I, I, I really love the premise, and it, it does it for me. It's like enough for me to want to play this game. Um, so the players are all voices inside Shakespeare's head as he's writing the play Hamlet. And you have um, a particular goal you want in mind. You have in mind for the, the players to go to, or for the, the how you want the play to end. And there's you know these different cards that are the that are for the different players. You're supposed to check them off. I use cubes instead um, on these different areas, so you can have them do certain things. And if they can do something, then something else can happen. And it's just it's it's a cool popcorn game. Um, and so we, I didn't play Hamlet, but I had it in the princess box, and I played princess. Uh, first game of princess was going along swimmingly. I had I was teaching someone for the first time. It's always nice to teach someone princess. Usually when I play princess, it's someone's first time, and there was another guy who was not his first time. Um, going along great. I have actually my granny's house pieces mixed in. It's a, another game by Family Pastimes, kind of a similar sort of thing you're doing in it, but I think an inferior game. Um, but mixing up the pieces is is really great because it makes a different, a, a much different princess experience every time. You never know what items you're going to get, and it's less likely that what occurred <laughs> would occur. And I'll tell you what occurred. So, um, did really well. Uh, you know, I had a, actually did something really violent to the guard, which I usually don't do. Usually, I. Um, bribe the guard or you know, do something else with the guard or let someone else deal with the guard. I usually I do a lot of sitting back in Princess to let other people explore the game because um, if I just come up with all the ideas it's they're, they're not doing it. Um, but there's this part where there's this dark tunnel and we got this jewel which you can see in the box there so I like put the jewel up to my heart and let the light of my belief like shine you know my belief in the princess uh, light up the tunnel. Um, Turned out I was playing with some real, like, not really realists, because they did things involving volcanoes and um, some other other things, which, you know, but they seemed like they could possibly happen, I guess. Um, but I used kind of, like, love magic, and it didn't really, they didn't dig it. So after that, we just kept getting night after night, all this night, Filled up the filled up the, the castle until we, you know, someone got the flashlight, got a flashlight, and used that to get through the tunnel, which to me is not how you play princess. If I got a flashlight in the tunnel, and you know, a flashlight item in a dark tunnel, I would not use it because that's just not fun, um, unless I was really caught up in just really wanting to save the princess. So then we were at the princess under the spell, and we got the final night. Uh, 
I lie. Uh, at that point, actually, towards the end of the game, I was trying to create this this um, narrative where, you know, there was all this disbelief in the crystal, and so I put extra night down as a result of that. And this little boy in a duck hat, well, not, uh, it's not super little, maybe seven, I don't know, in a duck hat, like, was watching us, and so I asked him if he wanted to join in, and he jumped in, and I was like, okay, he's going to do it, and he got some sunglasses, and he was going to use the sunglasses to get through the night. And he and he and I said, so how are you going to do it? And he said, I'm going to put it on, and it gets dark. I was like, well, the tunnel's already dark, so it's the. And he's like, well, the, the dark of the sunglasses was darker than the dark of the tunnel, and cancel it out or something. I was, I really wanted that to work, but the people were like, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> so I was like, gah. And so he actually ended up being the one to roll the die that caused the final night to fall in the the spell. So. Um, he wanted to play it again, and so everyone was game to play again. So we played Princess again. Um, I had to go to the bathroom. When I got back, the little boy was gone. The game went very similarly. We got to the tunnel. <laughs> I landed, you know, I had shuffled up all the items again, you know, because I have twice as many items. Shuffled them up again, got to the tunnel. I landed on the jewel. I was, I was defiantly said, I take the jewel and I use the love mat, you know, the, my love for the princess to light up the jewel and shine through the tunnel. Um, and this, this jewel was actually already revealed. I tried to use it to open the door, um, but they said that wouldn't work either. Um, and I tried to even make it kind of vaguely sciencey. I was like, I put the jewel in the lock and the sun shines through the jewel and magnifies and heats up the mechanisms and melt it, you know. I would say, you know, normally that would work, but that didn't work, and that's that's fine too. That is made for a much more interesting narrative. This whole thing, um, so that didn't work with the the tunnel. Then we started landing on the night again. I'm sorry if you don't know anything about Princess. You can look at the review. Uh, there's a review up of it that will explain it. Um, though I could probably explain it in ten seconds. Um, and so then we, got, you know, the night started filling up again. We got to the spell. We didn't pass the spell. Got the final night and lost Princess twice in a row. I almost never lose Princess. First, like first time I played with drunken adults, I lost Princess. Uh, second time I lost Princess was with this, the the black sheep actually, the guy uh, from the um, from the uh, Crusoe's planet, the guy who got killed. I was. It was like we were the last two people at the game shop, and I was like, "Hey, you want to play Princess one on one?" And got him to play Princess with me. He's a very stony-faced guy, so I, just like, so I like um, set it up so that he had to kiss the princess in order to to save her, but he refused to do it, and so we lost that game too. And then we lost twice in a row, all because they didn't dis they didn't believe that the power of my belief in the princess could light up the darkness. And so a wonderful gaming afternoon was had by me and I think some other people had an okay time too.